All right, so guys, before starting the session, uh, I would like to, uh, I'm really thankful to the EuroPython team, especially the organizers and even the sponsors who enabled this particular conference and definitely provided us a great platform to interact here and to exchange the ideas and to learn more. So really thankful to the whole team who make it happen. Now, uh, before the course topic, we'll just give you a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I'm Abhishek and currently I work as a principal data scientist in Microsoft India, uh, where I'm taking care of the ML based implementations for all Microsoft enterprise uh, business related solutions, products and different partners and clients that we, we cater here. Uh, I do have uh, more than 13 years of experience where I have worked across different domains, different technology stacks and even different areas uh, covering NLP, NLU, optimization, computer vision, recommendation system, and all. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be the part of the foundation team. Uh, so I got a chance to develop things from the scratch. At the same time, over the time, I definitely uh, have grown in this area and uh, now trying to deliver things and scale things for enterprises for their ML and AI needs. Um, I have worked in multiple domains like finance, retail, logistics, and uh, different payment network. I have worked for Musk, Visa, Fidelity, Dell prior to joining Microsoft. And also I am recipient of um, distinguished 40 under 40 data scientists in India in 2021. I also, uh, whenever time permits, I definitely uh, try to do some publications and try to uh, contribute in terms in research. So I do have five international publications and uh, have few patents and uh, trade secrets as well. Uh, I have done my master's from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, uh, which is one of the premier institute of India. And definitely like all of you, I'm a big believer, admirer, and uh, I really love working in Python since 2009, my college days. So yeah, that's about me. Uh, now I would like to set up the agenda and uh, definitely uh, this particular topic uh, uh, is really not only uh, very much practical in sense because now with the abundance of data we we can definitely have a lot of avenues open to implement more effective recommendation systems so i'll definitely try to touch upon why there is a need of recommendation system and how we are evolving how we are going from the traditional ways to the advanced way of uh, creating these recommendation systems how i have implemented this particular implementation which i am going to talk about what were the improvements and the findings that i had and definitely the tech stack that i have used for it uh, along with that i would like to conclude this so without wasting much time and in interest of time i would like to start with the need past part first so i can set up the context here um, like wh why we are going to this level of customization or what is the need for you know uh, uh, an advanced or evolved recommendation system so first of all it's definitely uh, not a choice but uh, it's not not an optional choice but it's a uh, definite choice for the companies to provide a personalized experience to their customers nowadays and recommendations recommendation system is definitely one of those key aspect that each and every company be it retail finance or any other b2b b2c company working in different verticals they definitely want to uh, cater their customers in their best capacity using the recommendation system so that that's why it not only brings more revenue to the to their company but also it it provides a great customer centricity and connect with their existing customers or maybe the potential customers they want to target so definitely it's a good thing but what are the challenges? The key challenge that lies in the recommendation system is how you are going to make it customized or tailor-made solution for your customer. That's where it ranges from a generalized to a highly customized approach. And when we try to scale that thing and we try to achieve the more customization here, definitely uh, we need to consider different things, uh, be it from the implementation side of the skill side of the things, or maybe the data dimensions that is available. So definitely, uh, each and every company wants to implement this recommendation system, which can cater the uh, customization part of it. But at the same time, there are challenges. And that's the exact crux of this talk. I will talk about how we overcome that and how we implement a, a hybrid kind of recommendation system, which not only utilizes the different data dimensions, but also club it well with the algorithm. So. Uh, we can generate and we can create much more personalized recommendation. So I would call it going from personal to hyper-personal. And definitely 
uh, right now there are existing uh, uh, traditional ways and even some advanced ways to create these recommendation system which can create some personalized touch but if you want to go further how can we utilize different dimensions of the data and how can we use different techniques that is available right now to create more impactful recommendation that is what i would like to explain the next so definitely i will talk about the evolution part where i will tell how can we use these diversified data because one thing is the data availability in case if you have additional information and if it is not fitting to your algorithm or the format that which algorithm accepts how you are going to fine tune it how you will uh, do the engineering for the features and how you are going to enable that information flow so you can create better recommendation rather than only relying on the purchase history or the interactions that has happened in the past so i will definitely talk about that and i will reserve last few minutes for the q and a guys so in case in between if you have any question you can ask or you can put it on the chat window i will definitely pick it up at the later stage now i will talk about the evolution part of it so we all understood that uh, recommendation is definitely uh, something which uh, which is dealing with the uh, evolution which is dealing with the personalization side of it and we do have existing recommendation systems in place and why is there is a need of this thing and in case if we are implementing what particular thing or what particular um, demerit it is demerits it is going to overtake or overcome so first of all uh, like if you will compare traditional recommendation systems versus the evolved one which i am suggesting or proposing right now uh, you can see clear differences which which can definitely be leveraged in terms of implementing a more effective mechanism here so for example the current existing systems be it like a priori algorithm or collaborative filtering or even Uh, you know different kind of embedding based methods that is exist that are existing right now if you'll see they all consider the purchase behavior or the interaction behavior you can say if it is not a purchase maybe it will be something bought something reviewed something seen like movies netflix and all so definitely um, the current system tries to uh, utilize the historical information like the transactions happened in the system where either a, per a, a person has purchased something or reviewed something bought something so that is what they use they try to uh, match it against the exist uh, against the uh, different set of customers who have similar kind of attribute but definitely they want to propose them something which may be of the similar taste so they try to find the similarity between two uh, customers and then based on the similarity they try to Uh, recommend something which has not been utilized by customer a but which may be a useful thing for customer b because customer a and b both have the have some sort of similarity so that's how traditional method works but there are challenges in that first of all it only considers user item interaction and second thing max to max it can take the meta information but that is not something which directly it can use meta information like item description and all that is also something you can use as a feature but in that case you can't use Uh, one particular method maybe you need to create some sort of hybrid um, recommendation system which will utilize some sort of classification approach and all so when it uses the historical data it uses only the transaction that has happened in the past there may be a case where user is interested but he may not have bought the item at that point of time maybe because of some reason maybe the some of the priority change but that doesn't uh, says that the user was not interested in that item so that kind of information will not be captured if you are looking at the purchase history but that kind of information will definitely be captured in the web behavior of a user so these kind of uh, data points like how many times a person is visiting time is spending on particular web page or how many stages in this particular purchase funnel he he has or she has come across uh, what are the different cross domain features if i can get some additional data for some other domain let's say a, i do have that customer information with me i am operating in multiple businesses i do have retail information and i want to apply it for let's say uh, some other category or some other particular like electronics product uh, catalog kind of scenario then how can i use that cross domain knowledge so all these things will not be considered in the traditional way of uh, uh, creating the recommendation systems and that's exactly where i try to uh, bring this particular evolve technique and we try to overcome that particular uh, thing where we can include more data dimensions uh, not only depending on the user item interaction means the purchase history but also we are trying to overcome the data sparsity issue 
that is there in the absence of i mean that that can be uh, that can enhance our current system by providing more uh, data points and by providing more richer information which will be helpful to create a much more impactful recommendation so these are the few things which is lacking in the current um, recommendation scenario and that's exactly where we are trying to bridge it now the question comes we do have data available with us and somehow we are doing the feature engineering but what how we are going to use it in the uh, current scenario let's say i am doing the matrix factorization method how i am going to use it because that is only taking input in the form of a matrix where where it will decompose it and apply some sort of methods and it will try to uh, create some recommendation based on that so the answer is we need to convert all these uh, intermediate data sources into a vector for representation that's exactly where the topic the core part of this uh, recommendation system which is network embeddings comes into the picture so i'll talk about this architecture more but in nutshell what we are doing is we are trying to uh, utilize all this information which is which is definitely uh, in addition to the user item interaction we are converting it back into a representation which can be utilized by the matrix factorization and then utilizing that information we are also trying to overcome the sparsity problem that we normally face in the recommendation scenarios so that's exactly how we are uh, using this evolved uh, evolved method and that is exactly the word evolution uh, uh, where you know we are going from the traditional way to the advanced approach now talking about the uh, implementation uh um, this is the the core how we are doing this particular transformation or we are trying to bring much more effective way of recommendations so typically if you will see the first thing purchase history that is something which all traditional ways of recommendation system tries to use they try to take the user item matrix and sometimes they also try to take the uh, content uh, into the consideration like if you are creating some content based recommendation system they will use uh, item description and all these kind of attributes in place so purchase history we are also using we are having a matrix formulation the same way we we use in the typical user item matrix format we are also using web behavior here where we will be converting the uh, the web presence of a customer how many times a person has clicked what item has been clicked we are trying to create a matrix out of it and that uniform matrix something that we are representing in form of uh, nodes so ultimately at this stage we are creating a particular network a neural network which will be converting this web behavior into a neural network representation and the output of that neural network will be again embedding layer which we will be feeding using the node to vac representation as the user embeddings we are also using item description and metadata here uh, need not to be tf id factorization you can also uh, bypass this phase and you can also create embeddings here so uh, that is just one disclaimer i want to put so it can be uh, it it can also consider the uh, use the embeddings based uh, feature vector rather than the tf idf so here we are converting we are taking these two things and finally feeding it through node to vac into the user embeddings so in simple uh, words if i will say i do have a user item interaction based matrix which will be feeded into the matrix factorization i need another factor which is the factor 2 which will be coming from my user embeddings now these both are matrix representation and obviously before that we will be applying the normalization why because the user item matrix will be having a different scale at the same time the user embeddings and the uh, item and the embeddings that we are taking will be having a different scale so we will be feeding these two here in this matrix factorization and after that definitely we will be uh, uh, going through the matrix factorization iterations different sort of fine tuning uh, parameters uh, their alpha beta gammas and trying to generate the recommendations here and then you have the feedback loop where definitely you can show show these recommendations to to the user you can get real time feedback how many clicks you are getting when you are recommending and how ultimately it is bringing more revenue and more customers or footfall on your website so that's exactly how this whole system works and this is the core architecture of this implementation and that's where we are converting this piece of information which was not used earlier in any of the recommendation systems be, be it like uh, collaborative filtering or be it uh, a priori algorithm we are trying to augment those systems by using these embeddings which will help to uh, get more information flow into the system and ultimately with this additional information uh, this recommendation system is in a better uh, place and situation to make more effective recommendations here
now i will also talk about the results and uh, shortly i will come to the tech stack and the pseudo code also which i have used here um so uh, in terms of the results definitely this the fa- the we i have compared the similar implementations where uh, this any mmf is uh, uh, net, uh, network embeddings based multi factor uh, 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 multi factor matrix factorization method so this this last category is what our uh, implementation is i evaluated it on precision and recall there can be other matrices yes but uh the reason why i have chosen this matrix because the earlier methods have been tested on this thing in the pr- prior research so i just try to see how this uh, revised method is uh, reflecting when i'm comparing to the similar kind of previous attempts so these are the different methods and you can clearly see that uh, across all uh, be it precision or recall definitely this particular recommendation is not only effective uh, in terms of accuracy but also it is effective in terms of uh, the kind of recommendations you want to make so n equals to 5 10 15 these are the three color coded things so that means top 5 recommendation top 10 recommendations top 20 so even when i am going to increase the coverage in terms of recommendation this particular method is suggesting a great accuracy in terms of the top recommendation that it is making uh talking about the fine tuning part because this whole implementation if you look at the architecture it goes through two things one is the matrix factorization so all those things which is applicable to fine tune a matrix factorization like uh, your latent factors and uh, other stuff uh, same thing same fine tuning will be applicable here and because it is using neural network so all those things like activation function loss function different layers that you are using will be equally applicable to the fine tuning of this recommendation so, so that's what we have done in order to get the optimal results out of it and doing the fine tuning of this network so there are two things and even uh, maybe uh, post this talk i will i will also uh, put the source code and other things so in case if you want to implement this kind of architecture if you find a good relevance in your industry or academy or the research that you are doing definitely you, you can go ahead and you can use it so, so but these are the two key uh, the code snippets i pardon if it is not visible but the one part is the matrix factorization and the other part is node to vec embeddings where i try to convert the uh, features additional meta features and the cross domain features into network embedding and feed it along with the uh, core user item matrix uh, to the matrix factorization method so i'll definitely provide uh the code is snippet as well uh after this uh, particular talk uh in terms of tech stack uh, yes uh, i have used the favorite scikit learn without that definitely none of the methods will work uh keras tensorflow matrix factorization library and pytorch and also a few more of the modules of this ip so in order to create this particular recommendation system now uh comes the next part which is <coughs> conclusion how i will evaluate this particular method in terms of uh, existing practice of the recommendation system versus the proposed one uh, definitely in terms of accuracy this is much better the reason is information loss that we normally face uh, in the regular recommendation system is too high we never we never uh, rely on the information which is not being uh coming to the trans- transactional databases like if someone is not purchasing we are not going to consider that particular information that is point number 1 so we have considered it and that is equally important because most of the information will come before that stage maybe people are not able to complete the transaction because of the various reasons but what we are trying to do in the recommendation is to know the taste whether a person is really like something or not and what is the propensity so that is something which which is a good information useful information that we are we are using here second thing we are also using the metadata information so any kind of uh, yeah uh, yeah i'll just spend a couple of minutes here and then i'll be open for q and a so any kind of meta information be it text or something else can be used here and the third thing is in case if you want to extend it with the any ad- additional data uh, dimension uh, you can utilize the same network embedding framework and you can implement the same thing so you can get get a uh, good exposure of those additional dimensions and you can utilize them pretty much in the recommendation systems so that's where we can definitely use this thing now what what is something that can be still improved obviously 
there can be uh, some features like user acceptance rate some sort of app or some sort of you know uh, different preferences that pe- users are having when they are coming to the website or they are using the web channels or maybe if you are dealing with the retail offline there can be other channels as well so you can use those uh, marketing channels sales channels information and the data that is something that i haven't explored but that can be added and also uh, other embedding methods can be used i have used this note to wack but definitely uh, that is just one way to solve the problem there can be other ways also to deal with this problem with that uh, i would like to take a pause here guys and i would like to open for the questions you can either put it into the chat window or maybe you can come and ask i would love to answer that so over to you guys thanks abhishek for that amazing talk uh, we have an on site question uh, could you please come to the mic and yeah please Yeah so thanks for the great talk uh, was interesting uh, just a question you have mentioned that you have different implicit and explicit uh, feedback channels that you are um, considering um can you just share your thoughts on how you are joining them in one matrix so how you would for example um wait if you see a user just clicks or visits a page a product page or whether the user purchases so how much stronger is the feedback um in a quantitative manner then if a user purchases something compared to just clicking or something like that so are you training those separately or are you joining them in a sum matrix because you said that you will reduce the sparsity by this and that would be just interesting yeah uh, really interesting question and that's that's where you know this particular framework will help so uh, as i told that there are different uh, scales when you are using use, user item matrix so user item matrix is just a representation where you are having the interactions based information available in terms of uh, uh, what is the rating or maybe how much amount you have spent or maybe some other uh, uh, mathematical notation there now when you are having uh, other metadata which i am tr- trying to use along with the user item matrix first i am creating the embeddings which is again a numeric representation but i need to apply the batch normalization to it and when i'm applying that batch normalization i'm also using the user item matrix along with that on the similar dimension so you can just think it like you are getting two different sources of the data one is your uh, one is the user item matrix which is on the on a higher scale dimension other one is the network embedding which is on the lower dimension once you'll apply again factor uh, this normalization taking both into consideration you can merge both data sets and definitely that's the whole reason why it is generating better recommendation because this uh, embedding representation is also bringing a lot of rich information along with it where it is giving me more useful insight for a particular user in terms of his or her liking or dislikings before that particular purchase history has happened so to answer your question uh, how i am merging both information implicit and explicit i am create i am getting these both uh, matrix representation and embedding representation and applying a normalization on top of it when i am feeding it to the matrix factorization method does that answer your question yeah it does thanks great and and uh, thank you for asking this great question Uh, yeah, we have a couple more questions. Uh, yeah, please. Hi, um, thank you for your talk. Very interesting. Um, if you can elaborate about what type of uh, behavioral um, data you have about web behavior and what type of formulation you did exactly. Great. So, if you will think about the web behavior, just I mean, this is really easy to connect with. uh just think about your own personal journey if if you are using amazon or any other e-commerce how you typically go you just go click on the page that will be your first presence so definitely it will be having one dimension coming from the number of visits second in the whole funnel you will be also dealing with um, let's say th- there is a page for checkout but before the checkout and from the time you enter to that particular portal there are a lot a lot more phases you just go check about the product details you go check about the price then again you navigate so there will be a lot of things that will be there before you go and check out that particular product and make your purchase so all this kind of information time is spent pages that you are clicking or uh, the kind of content you are looking for whether you are really price sensitive the how many times you are checking the price page and all so all this information will be available which will be Uh, which will be standard across whatever product you are going to purchase be it, be it electronics be it apparels or something so that is what i meant 
when i am talking about the browsing pattern okay so this is this is what basically goes into a typical e-commerce uh, uh, purchase funnel before the purchase final purchase does that answer your question Yes, but uh, what type of formulation you did over this data to Great. make sorry, it? So we, we're, once, we're yeah, once you are here. getting that thing, oh. what I have done is against every user, I do have this kind of metric. So um, one thing is, uh, I'm so sorry, we're going to have to stop here because uh, the time is over, but uh, right. you can hang out in the Liffy boardroom four and maybe definitely. where the Zoom breakout rooms. Definitely, and, definitely. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, let's give a huge round of applause to Abhishek. Thank you.